So a couple of weeks ago, I went on the YouTube community page and asked you guys to ask me some questions. A lot of you had questions about minimalism, about my financial journey, about pharmacy. So I thought I would take some time to help you guys get to know me a little better and answer some of your questions today. So let's get into it. The first question comes from Fanny Godmother. She says, how do you deal with impatience when it comes to paying off debt or saving? So like when you get paid twice a month, how do you deal with the impatience of wanting to do more while you're waiting to get paid. So I think this question is more about just the feeling of like being eager or impatient and wanting to just do more as fast as we possibly can, whether that be paying down debt or watching your savings grow. Um, and I definitely struggle with this too. And I think ultimately what I learned is that it really comes down to just exercising your patience. I don't really have another way to sort of get around that. I think again, it's a test of patience just because we live in such an instant gratification society and the hard part about debt or saving money is that it's definitely not something that happens overnight for most people. But if you benefit from sort of hacking your way and hacking your mind, um, I think another thing to do is you could set up like a weekly payment system. So maybe each week you set up an automated payment that comes out each week. So you're seeing that money kind of come down over time rather than having to wait those two week time periods. And I think another way to sort of just um, remedy this, the impatient feeling and the eagerness feeling is also just try to find ways to increase your income. So whether that be taking a second job, taking a part-time job and finding a side hustle by selling a bunch of stuff, having a garage sale, finding ways to increase your income that month so you can put down more money on your debt, whether that be in between pay periods or on the same pay period. When I could, doing those types of things really helped me when I started to feel impatient waiting on my other paychecks. Danielle asks, do you have any tips on how to shift our minds to make better decisions? Like making the decision to eat healthier, to do exercise, being consistent with saving money, not procrastinating, that type of thing. So um, I definitely still struggle with all of those things. I often struggle with still my impulse buying tendencies, with saying no to myself, with procrastinating, with ordering takeout when I feel lazy. Don't get me wrong, I still struggle and do those things. Um, I think in general though, I'm just a lot better at being mindful, thinking about it, budgeting for it, um, and straight up saying no to myself when I know it's kind of the right thing to do. But I remember reading something from the book Effortless by Greg McEwen, McCowan. I'm not sure how to say it. I think I butchered it in all my videos where I talk about his book, so apologies for that. Um, but it's in the book Effortless, and I can't quite remember off the top of my head what the actual like rule is called, but he talks about this concept where making a decision to say yes or to say no takes the same amount of time and energy output. It takes the same amount of energy to say yes to scrolling on your phone for hours versus putting the phone down, getting up and like going to do the dishes or going to do a workout. So when I realized the decision making energy was pretty much the same, that really helped me sort of push through procrastination. It doesn't mean I'm like a machine and that I'm like on all the time, but it really does help me kind of get past when I feel like I am wanting to kind of be more self sabotage and do things that I know aren't really good for me, that don't really feed me in any way and generally end up making me feel worse, but are ultimately easier to choose to do. Like it's easier to scroll on TikTok for hours. It's easier to just watch Netflix. It's easier to order in versus cooking at home. But I know it's necessarily not gonna make me feel good at the end of the day. So when I first read that and actually listened to it on the audiobook, that was really like a whoa kind of moment for me um, and I found that really helped. So I'll leave that link down below. So Lisa asks, if I earned enough from YouTube or other projects, would I leave my job as a pharmacist or I would wanna keep it at least part-time? So if I could self-sustain and feel secure in doing YouTube and content creation full-time, I would definitely do that. Although on the flip side to that, I wouldn't really ever give up my pharmacist license and here in Ontario at least, it's really, easy to maintain your license. Um, you only have to work like, it's something like 600 hours every three years. So there's not a lot of time that you have to commit to pharmacy in order to keep your license. 
Um, and I definitely would do that just so I can stay current. And I worked really hard to become a pharmacist, so I would never really want to leave that behind. So yeah, if I could ever become a full-time content creator, I don't think ultimately I would ever give up my pharmacy license, but I want to be able to dictate how often I work and when I choose to work. So right now I am very dependent on pharmacy to support me and our lives financially, but I would love it if YouTube could sort of help even out that scale just so I can have a little bit more balance because I go to work all day and then I come home and then I'm working on this and I love it but for over a sustained period of time I've definitely experienced burnout more than once um, and it is difficult to balance ultimately especially in COVID too where everything is just like 10 times more stressful than it was in you know two years ago so it's a lot and i would love to be able to kind of practice pharmacy on my own terms not necessarily because i have to to make a living and sustain my living stephanie wanted to know what kind of netflix shows i watch um i love documentaries i love anything our planet david attenborough we watched a lot of david attenborough during lockdown because he's just so calming and chill and it's just like so beautiful to watch and like little birds dancing in their little colors and um yeah i really like documentaries other than that i pretty much exclusively only watch the simpsons but I think you guys knew that already. <laughs> and if I really am feeling cheesy, then I will rewatch like the Sex and the City movie and Clueless like on repeat. I don't know. <laughs> what I wish everyone knew about pharmacists. We don't just stick labels on boxes and there's a reason that it takes time for your prescription to be filled because we are trying to ensure that it is the right drug, the right dose, that it's safe for you, that it doesn't interact with any of your other medications that your kidneys can handle it, that your liver can handle it. There's other things that go into your prescription and your care plan rather than just sticking a label on a box or filling a bottle with a bunch of pills. So please be patient with your pharmacists and your pharmacy technicians. Please be kind. And we're essentially here to make sure that what you're getting is right for you and is safe and is going to work. So yeah. Be nice to your farmies, please. <laughs> so Liz asks, what is it like to be debt free? Does it feel as you expected or is there a realization that the journey continues? Um, so by the time this video goes up, yes, I am debt free. Yay. <laughs> um, and it feels amazing to be debt free because for the very first time ever in my life, my money is actually mine and I, have sort of broken the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. And I'm proud of myself. I worked really hard to do it. I really tried to exercise a lot of discipline. I did a lot of soul searching and I really got to know myself and built a lot of confidence throughout this debt-free journey. And if I didn't do that, um, I really don't know where I'd be. Well, I, I do know where I'd be. I'd be pretty much in the same place I was three years ago probably more broke, more debt, and more stressed. It is just the first step to realizing that the journey does continue because now I am saving up my emergency fund. I wanna save up $20,000 um, to put towards my emergency fund. And the way I'm doing that and building that up is the exact same way as I have been paying off my debt. So quite aggressively so I can do it as fast as possible. And then the next thing I wanna do is kind of get back into investing and then start saving for a house. So yeah, the journey does continue. It's an ongoing thing. The other thing that I really sort of need to work through now is just finding that sense of balance. Um, I recently read the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi and I really love his approach to money because I find that it is quite balanced and it is definitely less stoic and strict than Dave Ramsey's plan. I find although his plan ultimately is the reason I got out of debt as fast as I could because I was intense and said no to myself a lot in a lot of things, but in, in a way I'm still on that extreme and I don't think that's necessarily how you define like a rich life I don't think that's the life I envisioned for myself just holding on to every single penny just because I can I think ultimately it's about being smart with your money getting out of debt making that money your own saving and investing some working towards your goals and 
having some fun, having spending some fun money, whether that be on clothes, on restaurants, on whatever. I think now I'm just trying to find that balance to tell myself that like it's okay to do that because I still do struggle with that. And now that I've also sort of labeled myself as a minimalist and really discovered this minimalist lifestyle, I feel like Anytime I do buy something or spend money, it has the potential to be put under a microscope for some like naysayer to be like, I knew it. She's not a minimalist. She's fake. Um, so I feel like that pressure too when it comes to my spending a lot. But yeah, if I'm gonna buy a pair of pants then I'm just gonna fucking buy them. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because I really kind of want to get out of this like nickel and diming mentality that I had for so long because I don't think that's necessarily healthy in the long term either. But yeah, being debt free is amazing. I'm glad I did it. I learned so much, but it's not like my life changed overnight. This is definitely like a long haul journey, a long haul confidence building and understanding of finances and money and how to build the future that you want for yourself. And it's gonna take some time. But I also think within that, there is some room to live your life and enjoy your life. And money is tied to that in a lot of ways learning how to be less guilty about that and allowing that in my life, I think that's gonna come next. So I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you guys do have any more questions, you can leave them for me down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them or answer them in a future AMA. Leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps out my channel more than you know. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd love to see you back. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.